Demonstrating Sustainable Sustainability, One Community Weekly Progress Update number 311. One Community is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are creating open source and free shared blueprints and resources, tools and tutorials, and do-it-yourself instructions for highest good living. Creating solution models that create additional solution-creating models in the service of all life on this planet. My name is G. Siebel and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit Organization. This is our weekly progress update number 311, March 10th, 2019 edition. One Community's mission, if you're not familiar with it, is to bring together people with the consciousness for the highest good of all life on this planet and to build self-replicating teacher demonstration hubs as a path to global sustainability. Demonstrating sustainable sustainability. And what that means is that we think that these teacher demonstration hubs, we know that these teacher demonstration hubs will make sustainability easier and more accessible to people all around the world. And the teacher demonstration hub model is designed in open sourcing and free sharing, everything as we are, is designed so that everything that we are doing can be implemented, evolved, and improved upon as either individual components or as a complete teacher demonstration hub. But the teacher demonstration hub is really meant to demonstrate sustainable sustainability by giving people a place that they can visit and experience everything that we're creating, or for people that really want to live this way and be a part of the Pioneer Team, a place where they can come together and cooperate and collaborate on radical sustainability, demonstrating radical sustainability in ways that we think are really only possible in a sustainable community model by cooperating and collaborating. And what do I mean by that? Well. The first, first of all, understand the foundation of what it is that we're creating it is an evolution of sustainability. It's taking the physical foundations of sustainability, which everybody's aware of, their food, their energy, their housing. Most people, almost everybody, I think, is aware that these are the foundations of sustainability today. But there are also emotional foundations of sustainability that we've identified as being almost as important, possibly more important, because of the foundations of happiness. From a financial perspective, they also reduce people's overhead, but really it's about the foundations of well-being and happiness, and it's a holistic way of living. And those emotional foundations that we've identified are fulfilled living practices, highest good education models, highest good economic models, and true earth stewardship. And that last one, true earth stewardship, is really about becoming the true stewards that we are capable of, of taking care of our local environments, of our communities, and, and in so doing, contributing to the health and well-being of our entire planet and building a sustainable, cooperative, and collaborative of organizations working together to create global sustainability. And demonstrating the sustainable sustainability part is teaching people how in working together in cooperation and collaboration, we can do more. Take something as simple as recycling. It is really, and packaging. If your goal is to live with a minimal carbon footprint. Imagine the difference between right now 50 different households going out and buying groceries for, for themselves and buying products for themselves and producing food for themselves, meaning like making food for themselves on a day-to-day -day basis. Compare that with the reduction of carbon footprint that you would get from doing the exact same thing in a community model where you could have just a couple people going and buying enough food for those same 50 families. You could have three or four people buying all the food for those same 50 families. And we could buy that food in large scale packaging. We could buy things in 50 gallon drums rather than individual packaging. And we could distribute it in reusable material in, in in refillable containers where we go and fill it up. If you want soap, you go fill your container up with soap whenever you want it. Instead of going and paying a premium price at the grocery store and getting an individual packaging that you would use and then recycle or throw away if it's not recyclable, instead you would buy it in bulk packaging. You would take your reusable container, you would refill it whenever it's empty, and you wouldn't that the cost of that would be absorbed by the community. And the materials and everything required to package that would be in a large scale instead. And when it came time to recycle that and everything else, you could coordinate that on a community level so that you could recycle virtually everything. And this is really what we see demonstrating sustainable sustainability as being about, is that it's difficult nowadays for most people to really 
be super sustainable. But in a community model, we can demonstrate sustainable sustainability by cooperating, collaborating, by bringing, bringing together people with a consciousness for the highest good of all life on this planet. We can bring that consciousness to every problem, every challenge of sustainability that we encounter. And through group thinking and group brainstorming, we can come up with best practices that would be virtually impossible to implement as individuals. Large-scale solutions that through cooperation and collaboration by working together, we can come up with better solutions. And so we've applied this mentality to all aspects of sustainability. We've applied it to the food, the energy, the housing, the education model, the fulfilled living practices, the social architecture, the highest good economic model, and the true earth stewardship. And we're open sourcing and free sharing it because we know that if we can make this idea easy enough, affordable enough, and demonstrates attractive enough, then the idea will spread on its own. And that is what one community is all about. This evolution of sustainability, making it easy enough, affordable enough, and demonstrating sustainable sustainability is attractive enough so that it can become mainstream popular and adopted in mainstream. And from there, through the cooperative and collaborative model that we're creating, through the environment that we are creating, that anybody will be able to come and visit and experience and bringing together the people with this shared consciousness, we can create solutions that people around the world will be able to implement. And so with that, let's take a look at one week of our all-volunteer team's progress and accomplishments working towards this goal of demonstrating sustainable sustainability. Check it out. The one community approach to highest good housing is eco-artistic home building that is affordable, sustainable, do-it-yourself duplicable, resource and space efficient, and consists of seven different sustainably constructed village models. This week, the core team continued design updates to the open source Murphy Bed Furniture Assembly details. This week, we researched the building code for outlets, made electrical outlet and switch location updates, and made an opening in the wall by the bed to access these new switches and outlets. You can see some of this work here. The core team also continued developing the best, safest, and most sustainable paints, primers, stains, and sealers page. This week, we added details for one more natural paint company and three different DIY paint options. And Vita Kumari Pandey, civil engineer, also completed her 33rd week volunteering and helping with the Earth Bay Village materials and costs. This week, she focused on the tropical atrium by adding more items and updating quantities for items like fiberglass insulation, wood railings, metal railings, patio flooring, etc. You can see some of this work here. Shadi Kennedy, artist and graphic designer, also completed his 42nd week leading the development of the Murphy Bed instructions. This week's focus was beginning the final diagrams for installation of lighting from the attic area cutaway sections, light can diagrams, and the installation of wiring. You can see some of this work in progress here. Dean Schulz, architectural designer, continued working on the Earth Bay Village. Here's weekly update 152 from Dean. This week's focus, as shown in these images, was working on the hallway and furniture for the non-ADA bathrooms. One community is also creating an open source duplicable city center. It is designed to be LEED Platinum certified, provide 12 guest rooms, dining for over 150 people, and laundry and recreation space for over 300 people, all while saving money, time, space, and resources. This week, the core team continued the process of modeling the new Duplical City Center interior design details for the library. This week, we worked on different designs for the tree stump tables and updated the tree branched bookshelf design, as shown here. The core team also continued adding the design specifics and writing the City Center open source HVAC design tutorial. This week, we started developing the Applying Lead in the Duplical City Center case study section and created all the sections shown here. Tanya Griffin, Aubrey Ann Boyle, and Allie Marsh, interior designers from Lotus Designs, completed their 11th week helping with the Duplical City Center interior design details. This week's focus was brainstorming what we think are the final paint, flooring, stall divider, countertop, and tile selections for the public restrooms. You can see the updated selections here. And James Harrigal, student researcher, also completed his 13th week researching the best, safest, and most sustainable paints, primers, stains, and sealers. 
This week's focus was adding more DIY paint and sealer options, more real milk paint company details, and researching and completing the entire sealer section. You can see some of this behind the scenes work here. Sneha Dongre, structural engineer, also continued with her fourth week helping with the Duplicle City Center structural details. This week's focus was researching what was needed to decide if we'd be using a riser for our domes. You can see some of this research here. One community's approach to highest good food is duplicable almost anywhere, scalable for different needs, more biodiverse and nutritious, part of forwarding a global open source botanical garden collaborative, and includes nine different free shared and duplicable growing environments. This week, the core team continued writing the behind the scenes narrative and the detailed food rollout plan for the various stages of development. This week, we continued researching goat care and fencing, reviewed the video treating wood fence posts the old timers way to extend the life of the posts, added comments to the Google Doc, updated the fencing materials list to include gravel, and combined the time frames with the rewritten steps. You can see some of this behind the scenes work here. The core team additionally finished the advanced composting section of the Soil Amendment Open Source Hub, which you can see here. Guy Grossfeld, graphic designer, also completed his 10th week working on creating an open source icon and symbol set for our permaculture designs. What you see here are the icons created so far. One community's approach to highest good education is designed for all age groups, adaptable to any schooling environment, inspiring and fun for all participants, includes national standards, all subjects, lesson plans, teaching strategies, learning strategies and tools, classroom design, and more. With eight years invested in designing it, this component of one community is pretty much complete until we move on to the property and continue to develop it with teachers and students. Completed sections include comprehensive subject outlines covering arts and trades, English, health, math, science, social sciences, technology and innovation, and values. Also, 52 weekly themed lesson plans covering all the subjects we just mentioned, all learning levels and ages, and usable in any learning environment. 12 detailed and progressive curriculum outlines are also complete, summaries and integration of all the best known alternative education programs including Montessori, Waldorf, ORF, Regio, and more, and leadership skills, collaborative assessment formats and forums, a global online free education resource hub, classroom design, and more. The one community approach to highest good society is globally focused, individually enriching, cooperative and collaborative, includes a highest good network and application, four different economic models, and combines fulfilled living and true earth stewardship for the benefit of all people and all life on this planet. This week, Emilio Nahara, digital marketer, continued with his 22nd week as part of the marketing team. This week's focus was refactoring more keyword strategies, including more for the soil amendment page, apiary page, and ethical goat raising page, and then started building the actual ad campaigns for the open source AutoCAD landing page. You can see some of this work here. In addition to this, the Highest Good Network software team consisting of Jordan Miller, web developer, Tyler Calvert, full stack software engineer, and Justin Kuntz, software engineer, continued developing the software. This week, the team worked on more color schemes research, created new dashboard color mockups, researched new tools for data visualization on the reports page, and developing responsive tables for the time entries. You can see some of this work here. Well, there you go. There you have it, one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working towards this goal of demonstrating sustainable sustainability. If you'd like to see more details, more specifics, links to all the open source content, everything that is we're creating and have created, visit our written blog, visit our website. There's so much content there. You really have to see it to appreciate it. It's all there. If you'd like to uh, receive an email every time one of these updates comes out, send an email to onecommunityupdates at gmail.com and we will add you to our newsletter list. Or if you'd like to follow us through social media uh, and, and uh, follow our progress that way, uh, you can join us on all of our different social media networks or any of our different social media networks. We are on all of the most popular ones. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, uh, of course, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are on LinkedIn, we are on Tumblr, we are on Reddit, and about 15 other social media networks to make it as easy as possible. Of course, that's the easiest way to help out, too. If you'd like to help us out in a super, super simple way, uh, share our information, like this YouTube video, make a comment, 
uh, help us get the information out there. You know, we're a 100% volunteer nonprofit organization, and so it's really through the help of people like you that we get the word out and we can get this hand information in the hands of people that need it most, continue to build our team, continue to work towards finishing all the open source blueprints and tools and resources. Uh, of course, if you like other ways to help, we do have a helping page. This is our helping page if you'd like to contribute. Uh, if you're somebody who's donated to our project, thank you. If you're somebody who sent us an email, thank you. If you're somebody who's already shared some of our work, thank you. It all makes a difference. If you're just somebody who's watched to the end, which uh, not everybody makes it to the end, we appreciate that too. Whatever way you're supporting, we really do appreciate it. Every little bit makes a difference. So uh, until next week, thanks. And we will, of course, keep on keeping on. Thank you.